Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Surya, your favorite sewing friend. And today is Sunday. And you know what that means, more sewing. So I have decided to make another Wilder gown by Friday Pattern Company or Friday Pattern Co, I think that's what they call. But I got this really nice fabric from the fabric store and I thought it would be really good as a nice flowy Wilder gown that is cotton and comfortable to wear because I have made the Wilder gown before in various polyesters. So one that was really lightweight and sheer, which was a nightmare to work with, but it looks really pretty, but I also need to wear a slip underneath, so I haven't really worn it at all. And the other one, which I actually do wear quite often, is a poly crepe. And that one, yeah, I made balloon sleeves and I wear it, like, I used to wear it quite often to the office uh, because it's just really long and flowy and is in a very nice corporate black and white print. But yeah, I really wanted to try making a cotton version so that it's nice and comfortable to wear during summertime. So this is the fabric that I've got. I got this fabric from the fabric store. It's really nice. It's like a nice lightweight cotton. Um, it's kind of a little bit see-through, as you can tell. So I will either put a lining underneath, um, which may be this, but it was kind of expensive, or I'll just go to a spotlight and get like a sheer muslin kind of cotton something. It's so nice. It's got a cute print. Okay, so first things first, I need to get out my pattern. I keep all my patterns in this ridiculous folder that um, kind of smushes them all I fold them all up which, you know, it's not bad like, I have little folders in here, see? they're like in a filing situation and I label them I've seen other people who file their, you know, patterns away in a nicer way <laughs> uh, maybe I should do that but I don't have that much space so anyway, these are my Wilder Gown pattern pieces I was thinking I'd do a mod on this wild, Wilder gown and do puff sleeves. They're kind of short puff sleeves. Um, because I saw someone on YouTube make a Wilder gown that had puff sleeves and it was the top version and it was really cute. So I'm thinking puff sleeves on this would be really cute to wear out in summertime. So I'm going to do puff sleeves and I guess I need to modify the sleeve pattern and look up how to do puff sleeves. So that should be super fun. I think, yes, this is my balloon sleeve. Hmm. Okay, so it's all sort of coming back to me now. Um, just after reading the instructions again, or part of the instructions, um, you'll need the front piece, the back piece, cut on fold. So cut two of the front, cut one of the back on the fold, a sleeve piece. So I chose the short sleeve piece, which I need to modify to make it into something that may resemble a puff sleeve. Uh, the tie, which is cut two of the ties, and then this big skirt panel, which is cut five, two panels for the first tier and three panels for the lower tier. So I'm just gonna probably work on making the sleeve more puff friendly. Okay, so this is what I'm going for. Wilder gown, but with puff sleeves. To get there, I'm going to be using this book to help me draft Pattern Making for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong and the section on puff sleeves. It's, yeah, slash and spread method. And hopefully it works on this. I think I'm going to um, definitely make a sample of these puff sleeves because I am not convinced that my haphazard sewing skills and thought process is going to work very well. So I'm going to make a sample first once I draft this and see if the puff sleeve idea makes sense. 
Wish me luck. Okay, so I've drafted what I think is a puff sleeve pattern piece. I don't know how this will go, which is why I'm making a sample to make sure that it actually works. So I've gone and like, I want to have a little flounce where I gather it up. So I've added five centimeters for the flounce. So it'll be like a four centimeter flounce. Maybe I should make it bigger actually. Anyway, we'll test this one. Um, I've put elastic casing and then, yeah, this is just how wide the sleeve will be. I feel like I need a bigger flounce. I feel like I will need a bigger flounce just from looking at it. I think four centimeters is a bit small for a flounce. But, you know, this is the reason why I'm doing a sample. I'm just going to quickly make the top half only of the sample just to see if this puff sleeve actually works and then uh, make modifications from there. So, wish me luck. Okay, I just wanted to show you the progress that I've been making on making different sleeves for the Wilder gown. So here, I mean, I don't know why I put in two sleeves when I could have just done it on the one, which is what I did. This is the puffed version that I've made. It, I need to lengthen it because I didn't realize that I would fold it up as much as I did and then make it too short, essentially. So I need to lengthen that. I also, don't believe that this is puffy enough for my shoulders because I am a bit broad so I think I will try to make this more puff and this is just what it looks like when it's not gathered up so it's just like a floppy like wide flowy sleeve which I don't mind actually so kind of looking at the two sleeves I still think I'm just gonna go ahead with the puffy version so I'm just gonna work on reworking that pattern piece to make it more puffy and longer. Hello, it is Sunday. I have spent the entire week trying to work out how to do these puff sleeves. Doing puff sleeves on a raglan sleeve is not the easiest, especially one that sh has a raglan sleeve but then shares the neckline with the neckline. It's just Ah, it's been a it's been a week so I'll show you what I'm up to now as you can see these are the many iterations of my sleeves and the mess and my pile of samples um yes yeah, so basically this is the final sleeve that I've come up with I'm pretty sure this is how it is so the neckline folds in around here and then that is like the whole part of the sleeve and then I've just made it extremely wide and my problem now is that because I've widened this by a lot um, it used to be only like 25 centimeters in width now it's like a lot more then because this is connected to the neckline it will create a lot of gathering on the shoulder which may look like too much so I'm thinking maybe I just add pleats to this at the top to bring it back to the same size it was before and then the rest of it will be very puffy. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. See, this is the original sleeve. 
So this part is the neckline and then, you know, it's connected to the sleeve. The neckline folds down like two inches. And so I forgot about that. <laughs> and then when I did a slash and spread method, I created this sleeve. But as you can see now, the points here are curved because of the slash and spread method. And so when you fold it down, I mean, it works, but it's kind of really irritating to sew. But also, like, this part is no longer straight. It curves outward, so that also makes it, it like difficult to sew. It doesn't just fold down nicely. Then wanting to make that one a bit bigger as the sleeve, because I didn't think it had enough puff, I made it like this. But again, this is still not straight. See how it's still curving? So when you fold it, like this isn't correct either. Which leads us to our final iteration, which is this one. As you can see, the top is very straight, which is part of the neckline. When you fold it down, it'll fold nicely. Hello, sorry, this is just editing Surya here. <laughs> I just noticed while I was editing this um, footage that I didn't actually talk about how I managed to even get to the final sleeve pattern um, that I ended up with to get these puff sleeves. And basically all I did was figure out after many tries uh, to get the original sleeve and then split it down the middle and then spread it out to the width that I wanted to achieve this much puff. And that was 73 centimeters and then from there you know you you just square off all the lines and then uh, keep the hem square and I just added on about 13 to 20 centimeters from the original so yeah just work out how long you want the sleeve to be and that's pretty much it like just don't worry about the slash and spread method that just makes the neckline wonky because the neckline is connected to the sleeve yeah and if you slash and spread it will make it all curved and extremely difficult to sew um, and then the rest of the sleeve. So what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is put plates at the top to make it roughly the same width that it used to be so that there's not too much gathering at the neckline because there is a tie that goes around. And I just found like when I was doing my samples, which I just did before, but I actually pulled out the tie so I can't show you again, but it was like a lot of gathering at the top, like maybe too much. So. I'm going to try picking this part and putting in the pleat instead and see if that works. And if it does work, then that is my final sleep pattern. I will cut out the real fabric and make it possibly today. So, very excited. It's today. It literally took me like the whole week to work out these sleeves. Granted, I wasn't really paying attention. I wasn't doing it like every single day. Yeah, uh, puff sleeves on a raglan sleeve is a uh, kind of hard but I think I figured it out sort of okay so this is what the sample looks like on this side so this is gonna have elastic casing around the ends to make it um, this side has no pleats, this side has that pleat, so I guess when the elastic comes up it will look like this, which I think looks pretty cool, just imagine it in black. Yeah, actually it's kind of cute with just big sleeves, but I think the pleat adds a little bit more interest. And then also, the neck, I just have to make it a bit better, but the neckline is less gathered, I guess. So, I think I'm going to go with the pleat version. Time to cut out the real fabric. So I'm ready to cut now. This is the fabric, as I mentioned previously, that I got from the fabric store. It's got these cute little embroidered round things but yes it's very nice it's 
it's been pre-washed it's a bit um non ironed maybe i should iron it again so the puff sleeves took up more space than i anticipated which is lucky that i got four meters of this fabric because for the last tier of the skirt, I had to pretty much just, like I didn't have enough space to cut out one full panel. So I had to make that one panel out of two sections, two smaller sections of the fabric. So that's the last panel, but I kind of made it a bit big. So maybe I'll just add more fullness to the lower tier. So I cut out all my panels for the skirt and now I need to cut out some lining fabric for the bodice and just like a little bit of the skirt just because this fabric is um, kind of see-through. You can tell it's like quite see-through. So I got some top poplin, just like a plain, a plain cotton polyester poplin from Spotlight. Pre-wash this and then like I actually wanted um, a cotton lawn but they ran out so I had to pre-wash this and put some fabric softener in it because I wanted to make it a bit less like scratchy. It's not super scratchy but it's not like light the type of light cotton that I wanted. Yeah I'm just gonna cut out the bodice and a little bit for the skirt as a lining and then we should be ready to sew. Yay! Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is base together the lining and the bain fabric um, of the back and the front bodice. So I'm going to pin those together, base stitch them together and then they should be securely in place to start working on the front first. So now that I have the base stitch, the lining to the main fabric, as you can see it's no longer very see-through, although you can't really see it because it's, it's black and very bad on camera. But now it's time to assemble the front. So you've got your two front pieces, right sides facing, put it on top of each other, and then we're going to sew down this line with a base stitch to the notch which is here. So a base stitch down to here on your longest stitch and then from the notch downwards you'll stitch normal stitch making sure to back stitch from top to bottom. And then because this is going to be the opening so base stitch is a lot easier to open. So now that the front is done, all stitched, we're going to flip to the wrong side and press open these seams. And then from there, you're going to unpick all the way down to that notch and then press this over again and top stitch it. Oh, actually, I think we're meant to just press it open and then press this again, top stitch it, and then we can seam rip it. Yes, that's right. Memory's coming back now. <laughs> So as you can see, I've pressed it open, but I've also pressed it under again. And then we're going to top stitch it down and then split this part open. 
up into the notch. Okay, the front piece is done. So if you can see, top stitched, I top stitched down this seam. And on this side it looks like that. And we're just going to seam rip this top section all the way down to that notched area. And it's all done. Just have to clean it up because there's so many threads everywhere. So the next part is to attach the sleeve to the front and the back piece. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I made obviously a puff sleeve, I also made it with something like it's meant to have a pleat. So I'm going to base stitch in those pleats. I made little notches where they're meant to go and fold in as such. That and like this. Hmm. Okay, now I'm confused. I need to look at my pattern piece again. Okay, so I'm just going to show you on my pattern piece because it makes more sense when I show it with markings. So this is a fold line, fold line, fold line, fold line. And that is where the pleat is meant to sit. So you grab that, and this folds like that, and then goes onto this pleat. And then the same with this side. So this grab from here, this marking, fold here, and then on this mark. So it's not looking very good right now because of the paper, but that's generally what I'm envisioning. Um, so I'm going to do that with both of them and just base stitch the pleats in place. Okay, so I've put in place the pleat, I've base stitched it. Looks like this. I'm kind of worried now because it is a little bit more narrow than the original, but I'm hoping that all of this puff will be fine. So as I was saying, I think I'll just show you here because it's having a struggle streak um, focusing. So made the pleat and then to keep this top half intact I just folded this in half um, and just sewed down the middle here so that when you open it it doesn't split apart at the top because this is the part that will um, fold down for the neckline yes it folds down about two inches so Yay, and now it's time to put this together with the bodice. So the front and the back. So just line up the notches, attach the sleeves, right sides facing to the front, and then both fronts, and then attach it to the back. sleeve, the back, which will is attached to the other sleeve, and then we'll attach to the other sleeve on the other side. So just right sides facing like so. Also I made a boo-boo when I was um, cutting out the sleeves because my puff sleeves are humongous so I had to cut them on the full but then I forgot to the pattern the other way around to cut the other side so I cut two of the same side so yes just a note if you're cutting sleeves on the full make sure you flip the pattern 
the other side so that you can cut another one that is pear as opposed to just the same one on the one side. So because I did that my sleeves sort of, I mean they match up but they were kind of a little bit off so I had to trim back a bit of, I like trim back one of them and sort of try to make it work. But uh, because this is a very uh, forgiving type of silhouette and everything gets scrunched up, hopefully you won't be able to see any of the issues once it's done. So I'm just going to finish sewing together the back piece to the last side of the sleeve and then we're going to sew down the arms, the side seam of the arms, the slight bodice and then work on the neckline. So normally at this point in time, after you, you know, put together the bodice and you've done the sleeve seams, like, yeah, you would then start to hem the sleeves, but I'm just going to do the neck instead. So what I've done is I've had to, because I've made pleats, because I've made pleats in this, uh, I had to seal them up a little. So here is one side of the sleeve, which is where the pleat is. Normally this whole part would be gaping as well, but I've gone ahead and sort of closed it up because I noticed when I was doing the sample, if I left it open and I started folding down the neckline, this part would gape open and then it would just make it really hard for me to sew straight lines and keep it all even and everything so I've gone ahead and just sealed it up by from the top to here from top to here it's about three inches I would say let me check oh no it's like five inches pretty much yes from the top to here it's five inches of of sealed uh, pleat and then it just goes free so and this is because you fold the neckline down by two inches so I sort of want some of the sealed bit to show and then puff out as a pleat if that makes sense um, yeah so I've simply just on the other side if you see it this is the pleat but then I've gone ahead and folded it and so down here to make it sealed. Um, yes, I hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but that's just what I've done to make my life slightly easier while I'm fixing this neckline. So just gonna go ahead now and fold down the neckline by two inches. And then sew across and then sew another row one inch away from the first line and then that will be the tube for the tie to go in through the neck. Then after that I can work on the tie and then also then the sleeves to make them puffy. Okay so I've now ironed down the neckline by two inches, pinned it and I'm gonna sew down this line here and then later on once that's done one inch away from that line I will sew another line and that will be the channel for our necktie neckline is done so I've made the channel for the tie to go through can't tell if you can see it properly it's in here and now I am to make the ties so on the original pattern it says to cut two of these but when I've made this in the past I've found two of these ties is not really long enough for me so I made four at one point and then that was too long so I'm thinking three of them will be long enough. 
So I'm just going to put them all together and sew them into one long strip. Then right, fold them right sides together, press it, so turn it inside out, make it into a big tie. So yay, I'm gonna do that. And then work on the sleeves, I think, and then it's kind of late, so I'm probably gonna fall asleep after the sleeves because that's the trickier part. Okay, so I've made the tie. Here it is, it's very long. Should be a good enough length, I think. So now it's time to work on the sleeves. So I want to make a little ruffle sleeve at the end so it has like a little frill. It's about seven centimeters in length. So in order to do that, I have to fold it up by about eight and a half centimeters because I've got elastic that is the width of one and a half. No, my elastic is like one centimeter in length. I mean, one centimeter in width. And so the channel needs to be at least one and a half centimeters. So yeah, fold it up eight and a half, right? Hmm. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that. So just fold it up. Oh, well, actually, maybe I should hem this. Okay, no, I'm gonna hem the raw edge first by like just a little, 0 0.5 centimeters. I'll hem this edge and then we'll fold it up so it's nice and neat okay I hem the thing it's very thin and now I'm going to fold this up so we're on the wrong side right now inside out fold this up by eight and a half centimeters and then we will make a channel here and one and a half centimeters up from there. And this part will be the flounce. Hello, another evening of sewing. <laughs> Top has sort of been finished. Top half. Let me show you what it looks like. Gosh, the lighting is bad in here. But basically, not sure if you can see much of the detail, but the top is done. I put the little ruffle sleeves in, which I had to do on one side again because I made the elastic too tight and it was cutting off circulation in my arm. I made the little pleat here. As you can see, there's a pleat here which then goes down into this sleeve. It's, I'm actually quite happy with how it's turned out. Surprised and happy. <laughs> so as I was saying, pretty surprised at how well it actually turned out. I guess it pays off when you uh, make three samples of the same sleeve like four times over. So yes, my sleeve with the pleat worked out. I'm so, this is like probably one of the few times that um, my crazy ideas for modifications has actually worked out relatively okay. So now I'm going to work on doing the skirt section, which is a little bit more modified because I didn't have enough material, because I didn't realize how much the sleeve would take up a lot of the material. So gonna work on the skirt today and then hopefully it will just be done because the skirt part isn't really that hard at all like so it says in the pattern that ooh, so in the pattern you've got um, five panels in total that they make you cut out so two of them are for the top layer so you sew these two lengthwise together so you make one massive panel run a gathering stitch like run a base stitch down the top gather it up and then put it on the top half and then after that you get your last three panels you sew them all together and then attach it to the first panel so I guess on the first one I also did cut out panels that matched the mm, is this right Hmm, I feel like I should have made this bit longer. 
as I was saying, I also did cut out like some fabric for the lining of the skirt. Pretty sure it should be enough for just one top half, but maybe I need to cut out more. I should have made this longer. Why didn't I not think of that? But anyway, let's see how it works. Oh, this is what happens when you don't measure yourself. Okay, so let's work on the top half first. So I've got the first two panels of the main fabric, right sides together. I'm going to sew together these two panels to make one massive long panel. And then once I've done that, I will also sew together this lining panel, which I had to recut because I made it the same size as the main panel, which is too short to cover my bum. So I had to make this longer um yes so i'll sew these together as well and then once i've done that i will sew the lining to the main panel and then base stitch all of that gather it up and attach it to the bodice over there and that will be the first panel done and then we'll do the lower panel which is three panels sewn together, but in my case it is two panels and two other slightly shorter panels, so four panels. Oh. So this is the first layer, we're going to sew down this side and this side to make one massive long tube I guess. And then I'm going to do the same for the lining and then attach the lining to the top all the way around. So I have made all of the tubes, I guess you would call them. <laughs> so first panel, um, first panel, and then the lining panel, and then I made this really massive long one for the bottom tier. So I've done that and I also decided to overlock all the raw edges now rather than later because it's a bit hard to do it when everything's sewn up. So I've done that and now I'm going to attach the first panel to the lining like I said. Right sides facing, I put the skirt and attached it to the bodice. Matching up gathers is so fiddly, but I think it looks even. I think. Oh my gosh guys it's done it's so good so the top and then I attach the skirts yay um, I also did which I'm really proud of a narrow hem using a narrow hemming foot it is so nice okay that looks a bit bad but <laughs> on the front side it looks great look how narrow it is it's so good and I also did it for the lining as well underskirt it's yeah I am thoroughly impressed with how good this turned out and mildly shocked 
Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Wow, I'm so happy. It feels so nice to wear as well because it's nice and floaty, cotton, very lightweight. I don't think it'd be super breathable um, for, you know, like hot, hot summer days, but I think definitely like spring, mild summer days, very good. Very nice and breathable, really love it. I think if the lining was the cotton lawn that I wanted, um, it would be a lot more breathable, but because it's a top poplin, it is a little bit still thick. Uh, but yeah, it's great. This is so much fun. Wow. Definitely my favorite make so far, I think. <laughs> So that is all from me. If you like this vlog and you want to see more, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next sewing adventure. Bye!